Hello and welcome to 7th JMeter training video tutorial. So we will learn few more uh, aspects of JMeter in this tutorial. So let's see what we are going to learn. So in this tutorial we will see how we can store uh, graph results in file for offline analysis. Uh, we have been executing tests from within JMeter from GUI uh, which may be laborious, not really laborious, this may have performance in impact itself if you are running tests for say thousands of users and then there is lost of test result lots of test results which are generated so we do not want to have this option to us we want to be able to run test from command line and then we can have graph results which are saved into files and then we can analyze them once test run is over we would also have a look at file contents or the graph or the result files which are generated we will execute test from command line uh, there would be two, two types of uh, formats, CSV file as well as XML file. So we will have a look at uh, their formats also. So let's first see how we can uh, set up JMeter so that we can have uh, file results saved for offline analysis. Alright, so I have JMeter opened here and we have the previous, uh, we have test from previous session which was Mercury Tour. There are a couple of other listeners here which I have disabled, so let's not worry about them for now. I would explain them in the future session. But the thing to notice here is that I have view results in tree enabled, which is one listener which we used in previous sessions also, and we never specified a file name here. And now we have file name here. So what I have done here is I have a specified file name as tilde slash test result, which means that uh, test result file would be saved in the same location where I have my JMeter project. So if you see my JMeter project in, is in desktop, JMeter project, JMeter project file.jmx. In fact, I have it opened here. So this is the location of my JMeter file. So now when I would be running tests later, then we would see a file with the name test result is also created and stored in the same location. Alright, so this is how we can set up the file name here. You can also specify absolute name to the file path, but I have given relative path because it would be easy if you want to export test from one machine to another machine. One thing to notice here is that test meter generates the same file content for different types of listeners, but how it represents the data is something which differs from one listener to another. So in file results in tree, we have this kind of view and we saw view results in table in previous sessions. And here also we can open the same file, but the uh, view would be different. All right, so let's see how we can utilize this uh, configuration now. Mm, but before that, one more point that if you want to change how this default location works, for example, tilde slash uh, defaults to the current location of the project file, you can specify this property in jmeter.properties file. We have something called jmeter.save.saveservice.base underscore prefix. So this property is specified in jmeter properties file, but I think for most practical purposes, you wouldn't have to change it. All right, so let's proceed. So what I would do now is I would run the test from the command line and then we will see what happens. So I have command line open here. Uh, and this is where I have my JMeter. So you have to go to your JMeter installation, Apache JMeter, Win directory, and here you have JMeter batch file. So this is JMeter.batch command. And then it is followed by two arguments. One is hyphen N, another is hyphen T. So hyphen N is for uh, non-GUI mode. So JMeter will run in non-GUI mode. We are not going to run test from GUI here. We are running test from command line. And hyphen T is for the test plan. So following the argument hyphen T, we have specified entire path to the test plan. So this is my test plan path. Yeah. In JMeter project folder, I have JMeter project.jmx file. And this is the same location which I have specified here. And now I can run it. But before that, let's see what else we have here. So we have the configuration here. We saw this config button in previous session also. So using the configuration, we can specify what test attributes or test result attributes should be saved in a file. So if I just open configure, we have save response code, save label, save success, save response header. Let me select save response data also. And if you notice here, 
in front of save response data i have xml mentioned there which means that this option or any option which has xml mentioned in front of it is applicable only for xml file format and if we have an option with csv in the bracket then it would be applicable only for csv file format all right so let me select save as xml let me click done let me save it and then we run the test so let me just hit enter and this is where our test begins and in fact test was pretty quick and it is going to shut down now since we are running test with just one user it doesn't take long time and let's get back to our jmeter project file location so what do we have here all right so i was expecting to have uh, one xml file generated all right so looks like i used the wrong format here it should be uh, front slash and not the back slash because I am on a windows machine so I have changed it to front slash now so it is tilt front slash and name of the file so let's run our test again so this is a command and let me execute it alright so test execution is over now and let's get back to our project location so we see here we have a new test result file generated which we can open with the notepad uh, cancel cancel and I think I can set the language here yeah let me change it to XML yeah so this would make the analysis uh, easier later so let's open this file now in uh, JMeter alright so I'll select here all files and this is the XML file yeah so we see here the results which are saved in the file and now we can analyze these results so the request has failed because looks like some resources have run into 404 so we can see errors here we can see request as well as response data so we executed the results and then we loaded the file the result file in the jmeter and we executed test from the command line here so this is one one format uh, uh, which is with xml now if you want to save test result in csv file we can do something like this let me first clear the result and let me delete the file from here and let me uh, configure it i will uncheck the save as xml and it has the okay it has the absolute path in this case i would just name it as csv let me save it and let me run it again uh, not this window this window let me clear this also let me check if everything is okay yeah this is all right csv file saved it and let me run it again all right so test is over which is really small which is just with one user and let me open yeah so this is a new file which is a csv file now and now let let me just browse it again yeah yeah so this is a csv file now if you see here we do not have the child request which we were able to see with the xml file so this is one limitation with csv file but the advantage here is that csv file will not occupy as much memory space as xml file and we do not have any request or response data here for example if you see the configuration so we have response data available only with xml file format all right so this is how we can run test from command line we can generate the test result file and then we can open them later in the uh, jmeter gui and analyze it but let's see the format of file we have not seen the format of file so far so i deleted one file but let me just uh, keep it uh, yeah the test result file so let's see what we have in the uh, xml test result file so this is xml test result file and it has uh, information about the http samples but it is followed by some cryptic information and let's analyze it so http sample is some http samples we have here and this http sample has further http sample because we saw in the previous uh, run that we had sub requests within one http request now what do we have here so we have something called parameters here so we have something called t here what does t mean so t is here the elapsed time which is the time which jmeter measures just before sending the request to the last response it has received so this is the time which jmeter measures just before sending first request to the 
time it has taken to receive the last response. In this case, JMeter will not consider any time which is required, uh, say for the client side code, for example, JavaScript. So actual time of rendering may be different here. Then we have something called LT, and this time is in milliseconds. Then we have LT, which is latency, which is again in the milliseconds. So here latency is the time which JMeter measure, measures as time just before sending the first request uh, to the time when it receives the first response. So this time includes all processing needed to assemble the request. Uh, so if you are using something called Charles proxy, uh, then it, uh, sorry, if you are using something called Wireshark, then it may be a little different uh, because JMeter would be more closer to browser than any protocol analyzer like Wireshark. Then we have something called timestamp, which is timestamp in milliseconds from uh, 1970 UTC. Uh, then we have something called S, which is a flag. This is a flag for success or failure. We have false set here because we saw one of the sub request fails uh, for our current test. Then we have LB, which is a label, which is sample label. So our sample name is welcome page. Hence, we have welcome page here. Then we have RC, which is response code. So response code is 200. Then we have response message, which is OK here. Then we have TN, which is uh, nothing but the name of the thread. Then we, and we have, well, name of the thread is thread group 1. So we have thread group 1 here. Then we have DT, which is data. And data type is uh, text here. Then we have something called by, which is uh, byte. And then we have ng, which is number of active thread in this group. And then we have na, which is number of active thread for all thread groups. Now this HTTP sample has the child sample here, which has the similar attributes. And then we have uh, headers, which are the response headers. And then we have request header. And since we are saving the response data, response data is also saved here. And then this request keeps going. Now let's see what we have in another file, which is a CSV file. Let me open CSV file also. This is a CSV file. Yep. So CSV file is pretty small in size and in comparison to XML file. And we have same similar data sets here. So the first data set or the first value is here, the timestamp in milliseconds from January 1st, 1970. Then we have elapsed time, the same as we saw in XML file. Then we have sample label. So we have welcome page, registration page, and create account page. So these are the labels which we have uh, on JMeter samplers here. So these are the labels which are recorded here. Then we have name of the thread group, which is thread group one. Then we have thread, uh, we have data type, which is text here. We have a flag, success flag, it is set to false here because one of the sub requests for the sampler had failed. We had seen this. And then we have something called, well, we don't have any value here after success flag, but it would be for failure message if we have any. Then we have bytes. And then we have group thread, that is number of active thread in the thread group, which is one here because we are running test with just one thread. And then we have all thread, which is again one. And since I save URL also, the application URL is also printed here. All right, so let's go back to our content here. Yeah, so what we saw, we saw that we do not have to run a test from JMeter GUI if we are running tests with many users because JMeter itself might crash. So we can run tests from command line. But if we want to analyze results, which we definitely want to do, then we can configure JMeter in such a style to save results. How do we do that? We say tilde and then uh, slash, which is a forward slash here and then the name of the file, any name you want. And in this case, it will be saved in the same location where your project file is available. And then we executed our test from the command line. And we saw that we have two file formats. One of them is CSV and another is XML. And then we analyze the format of these two files. So I think that's enough for today's session. Uh, I hope you find it uh, educational. And if so, then please hit the like button. And now I will meet you in next session. Till now, bye-bye. Happy learning.